All right, guys, welcome to the US Chess School. Uh, we're very fortunate today to have Grandmaster Johan Helstein with us. Uh, he's a pretty well-known author of a bunch of books uh, that I personally really like, specifically um, Mastering Chess Strategy, and he's also written Mastering Endgame Strategy and Mastering Opening Strategy, three books that I think are truly um, excellent. Uh, he'll be teaching the US Chess School class um, today, so without any further uh, ado, I'll, I'll throw it to uh, uh, Johan. Okay. Hi, everyone. Good evening. And um, I'm very pleased to, to be here again with all of you. Thanks a lot to Kostya and Greg for inviting me. And um, what we're going to look at today is about endgame skills. Because when Greg and Kostya asked me about uh, this subject, uh, learn from your losses, uh, I had to kind of scan my memory about my weaknesses in the past. And I noticed that actually one of my biggest problems when I was a kid, a teenager, let's say, was the handling of endgames. And uh, yeah, just summing up, uh, I had several bad endgames in my in the past, in in my teenage uh, years, and uh, but I learned a lot from them. And the way that I thought about uh, do, doing this class was to look at some of my losses, or let's say some of my setbacks, and then we will have a quick look at some of my later uh, good endgames, so to speak. And of course, I will ask you the questions so that you participate as well in this class. So at this moment, we will go back to 1990. I guess nobody was born uh, back then uh, from the people who are around at this point. Well, I was uh, 14 years old at that time and uh, I liked a lot to play openings where I would end up with a knight, like the Nimsu Indian, the Karo Khan, uh, the Rosolimo with white. I really liked to play with knights back in those days. And this game was actually at Chigorin. I had bought a book by John Watson about the Chigorin, which was uh, very interesting. I liked really uh, this book by John Watson, and I was eager to put in practice my, my new opening, the Chigorin. And uh, this is how it ended. Uh, in this kind of uh, tricky endgame. So at this point, I would just like you to send me what you think is Black's best move. Please send me, and please uh, stop uh, spamming in the chat. Uh, let's try to keep things technical here. Uh, let's keep keep uh, this to... Uh, Brian Tay wants control remote. Uh, some message here, uh, I will not uh, prove it. Uh, Decline. Okay, so two minutes. Please send me Black's best move at this point. Nothing special. I'm just asking for common sense here in this endgame. Two minutes. All right, let's see. Well, common sense would be to Try to bring in the king, right? Oh, we got two minutes on the clock. Okay, here we go. Um, someone in the Zoom chat pointed out knight d6 runs into e5. And then uh, f e, f takes g5. Like it's dangerous outside past pawn. But something like king d7 or maybe c5 or c6 makes sense. Mm, so Twitch chat likes King D7. So the way this is working, actually, I'm muted in the Zoom chat, so they can't, the class can't hear me. Um, and uh, of course, Johan is only focusing on the Zoom chat. He's not reading Twitch chat. So it's like me and Twitch, and then we're just kind of observing the uh, the Zoom. All right, looks like King D7 is the Twitch choice. Let's see how we match up against the, <laughs> the US chess school, because these kids are, of course, really strong, very talented. Uh, and oh, it looks like we're, we're closing the Zoom chat, so it's a new record, <laughs> two minutes in. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, Dave says if king d7, maybe e5, fe5, fe5, then bishop b7. But you gave white okay. two moves in a row. Okay, time's up. I had a very interesting suggestions here. Let's hear what Asish Panda has to say. Okay, Asish, you're on. Uh, I said king d7, then king d6, then plan of c5, b6. Aha, very reasonable plan. We should put our pawns on dark square, most probably, taking into account that white has a light square bishop. Aha, did you think of any other move, uh, Asish, apart from king d7? Some other move across your mind? Uh, no, I don't, like, it looks like a white, white can't like, do any breakthroughs. So, ah, you, did... like, so the you king mean... is passive, so I, that was the uh -huh. first logic. Okay, that's a very good answer. Thanks, uh, Asish. And this is exactly my mistake in this game. I didn't bring the king. Uh, this was the ideal moment to get my king a bit closer to the action. Nice guys. As nice. many king of you seven. saw, there are some ideas with, with breakthroughs, with e5. And if I have my king a bit closer, there won't be any problem with this. Now look at what I played. I was just uh, waiting to see if somebody would suggest my move. But uh, I can see that you, you are better at endgames than well, I was back then. Because I played here knight h8, I which I thought that. was a brilliant move. Interesting. I said, well, I will go with my knight to g6, and then I will put it on e5, and I will win this game thanks to my good knight versus bad bishop. Okay. Anyone? Oh, here I have a question. Why knight h8? Well, I just gave the answer, right? I want to relocate, reallocate my knight to the e5 square. So, uh, some people here already understand what will happen. Brian Tay, for example. Aha. Uh, if you like Brian, you can share, share with us. Uh, what did you find here? What will White play at this moment? Um, I can play e5 here because um, if he just does nothing, then just knight g6. Aha, if he, so exactly. See, I mean... But you lose a pawn, Brian, don't you? I can now take on f4 and, and I win a pawn here, right? He's active. Huh? I mean, the king is active. Yeah, the king is active. Okay, please, please continue, Brian. What will happen here? King f5? Wait, oh. Of course, king f5. You already noticed that knight h4 doesn't work, right? Yeah, king takes a six. Uh huh. <laughs> g5. And g5, and black cannot cope with both pawns. The knight no. is not particularly strong in these kind of positions. I would have loved to have a bishop instead, instead of this knight. Uh huh. So in the game, I took on e5 instead. And uh, what would what would you play now, Brian? I thought g5 here. I don't think you should do that. My knight is bad, but not that bad, right? No, wait. I, th I think I can take it, and uh, no, yeah, I, I will be able to. In the worst case, I think I could just give, give it up, right? I could yeah. give it up. Yeah. So don't uh, don't rush, no, don't rush things. You have at least two winning moves here. Bishop e4, give it. Aha! Uh -huh. Yeah, you should just move the bishop. Bishop e2 was what my opponent played. It's a good move. Now he's threatening, of course, to take the pawn. I had to pay. 97, and you can guess the next move now, Brian. Bishop c4, bishop e6. Of course, of course. Bishop c4, and the bishop will go to e6. Uh, please notice that uh, temporarily white is a pawn down, but uh, he will soon get back that pawn, and then we, he will have a very good passed pawn. Yeah, this is how the game went. Uh, bishop e6. Yeah. Bishop e6. I had to move the knight, unfortunately. And yeah, you can guess what happened then. Take on f6. Ah, take on f6. By the way, Max Lu asked me, why not bishop d5 immediately? Yeah, that's a good move as well. He could have played bishop d5 as well. It's an ex excellent move because you're now threatening to play g5. Ah. So it's, it's good as well. Yeah, both moves are enough for a win here. Back to the game. This is what happened in the game. King takes f6. I cannot take, of course. Then the pawn would be just too much. The typical outside passed pawn. I had to play here knight h7, but uh, yeah, this didn't work. Uh, Let's see if you can finish off this, uh, Brian. King... King g6. King g6, knight f8, king f7, knight h7. And yeah, and the rest is easy. Bishop f5. Aha, bishop f5. Yeah, this is how the game went. Finally, my knight had to move away and yeah, white uh, soon won. As you can see, with one single word, my problem here is the king. 
I didn't bring the king. I didn't centralize my king. That was my mistake. And this was a rather important game in, in that tournament. So really silly mistake, right? Really silly to play this move, knight h8. Uh, maybe you know about this old Nimsovic game, where Nimsovic plays uh, knight, uh, how is it? Knight f knight, knight h1, h1, knight f2, knight h3, knight g5, something like that. Okay. I'm sure some of you have, have seen this game in the middle game position. And here I tried to do it in the end game, but as you can see here, time was not on my side. King, the king was not active, and that's why he oh, punished me nice. with this very nice move. E5. Right? Okay, yeah. excellent. So, aha, Robert says, good strategy, bad tactics. Yeah, you could say that, but also, I mean, here I'm just doing something strategical with my knight, but uh, a, a fundamental part of endgame strategy is to activate your king. So, in a way, also, I'm violating here the, the general rules of endgame play. I should have brought my king to the action. Anyway, let's uh, move on to the next case. Uh, now we're in the year 1993. Well, I was invited to a tournament in the former Soviet Union in Tallinn, the capital of Estonia. It was a very interesting experience. I had to play with uh, strong players. They later became grandmasters. And uh, in this game, I was playing with an unknown opponent. And I think he didn't even have Elo. He didn't Wow. Even have Fide Elo. Well, really? did you ever show this? No, I don't think I show this. Or do you remember this position? <laughs> I hope you don't. I don't but uh, we, we will look into it, okay? So I'm playing black here. I'm two pawns down. Yeah, I think maybe we saw this in, in some previous class. I'm two pawns down, but I, I was saying that, okay, this is opposite color bishops. And my bishop is on the right diagonal, where I'm controlling most of the white pawns. Anyway, the question for you is between bishop e4 and bishop c6. Which one is a bad one and why? Okay, I will write it down here so that everybody can understand this. Between bishop e4 and bishop c6. Which one is a bad move and why? Two minutes. Okay, so we're choosing between bishop e4 and bishop c6. We have to eliminate one of these moves. One of these moves is apparently losing. Let's try to understand. Apatsi says bishop e4, so you cut the king from coming to pass pawns. Oh, so you're saying on bishop c6, white plays e4. And then we take with the bishop. And then they go king e3, and king runs to b4. That's interesting. I'm not sure. That, that's definitely one clear difference. Bishop e4, I honestly don't, I don't see a huge concern right off the bat. Bishop c6, though, e4 might be a problem. Because e4, definitely have to take with the bishop. Um... And if, well, if fe, we have king takes g4, bishop takes, king moves to b4. But black will put the bishop on c6. So I'm not understanding how white breaks through there. This is a tough one. Bishop e4, I guess, is the intuitive choice because at least we're not allowing e4. I just don't see what we're allowing with bishop e4. Very, very tough. I would never have guessed in a game that this is super critical. Okay, time's up. This was a more difficult one, I think. And uh, some of you perhaps noticed the right idea, but uh, you didn't execute it in the correct way. Anyway, Ryo Chen found the solution. So we will listen to Ryo. Hmm. So bishop e4 is good, but bishop c6 loses? Uh -huh. Because after bishop c6, he, he will play e4, 
not a three immediately because I take and then I queen. One, one moment, please. Aha, no white piece can stop the f pawn, oh, right? So he has to play e4. Uh huh. Uh, and then after f e4, I take on g4 and I have up two outside pass pawns. Exactly. So he has to take with the bishop. Uh huh. And now f3. Correct. If you, if you don't take, I take on g4 and get connected passers again. Wow. Mm -hmm. After bishop takes f3, we play h4. And on pass on, I take the bishop. Otherwise, exactly. And if You're pawn right. takes f3, wait. Uh, uh -huh. And the king to e3, I stop the pawn. I think you have a better move here. Uh, Probably bishop. Just bishop. this final part. You don't have to go back with the king, do you? Oh, I can't split bishop before. Yeah, I think that's better because that's really in nice. this way your king can be used for, for more active means, right? Aha, yeah. uh -huh. thanks uh, Rayo, excellent work. That's exactly what happened in the game. So just going back to the initial position, I think that I relaxed here. I thought that this was going to be a draw and I didn't really look into this. And uh, what I wanted to tell you also is that the Soviet chess school or the Russian chess school is known for very good endgame skills. So my opponent here, he didn't really have an ALO back in those days, but he sure not knew a few things about endgames, as you can see here. My move, bishop c6, was really bad. I simply didn't notice this uh, breakthrough idea, That's huge. which That's he used in the cool game. Idea. Had I played bishop e4, like Ryo said, then black would be okay. Not so easy for white to progress here. For example, if he plays bishop d6, well, then I can actually move the bishop, because now the same idea, it won't work, because after... Bishop takes uh, here, he cannot use the, the bishop anymore because it cannot go to d4 anymore. So, uh, really, you can see here a difference between endgame skills. Uh, bishop c6, bad choice. And just like Raya explained, e4, extremely strong. There followed bishop takes f3, sacrificing two pawns in order to create a strong passer on the h file. And as you can see, many times in the opposite color bishop's endings, it's not enough to have one passed pawn. Uh, this is different to other kinds of endgames. But here he has two. So it's very difficult for me. I played bishop d5. He brought the king to e5. He's still waiting to see if the king should join the h pawn or at some moment it could join the c pawn. I tried king e7, but as you can see, the king won't be able to stay there for long. He just rolled with the pawn. And here he played bishop e3. Very reasonable move. I will soon make another question for you. So don't... Uh, don't get bored here. We will soon have a new question. <laughs> I played here king f7. Well, the pawn was going to advance anyway. And so finally he opted for king d6. I, I not noticed that my only chance here to survive is king f6. I have to play active myself. Try to push e5 at some moment. He played c6. And here I gave up the bishop. I could have played bishop c4, but still it was a very difficult endgame. Let's see what happened in the game. So I push e5. And he played king b5. Correct, of course. He's now trying to uh, create a new passed pawn while the bishop is well placed in order to cope with all these pawns. Kind of uh, the principle of one diagonal. So I played f4, pawn takes, pawn takes. And it's your move. Now I will uh, flip the board. White to play. Please send me white's best move. I will only give you one minute. But if you can uh -oh. give me some explanation with words why this move is the best one, that would be great. One, move, one minute, I mean, uh, white to play in wing. One minute, guys, let's go. Okay, if we give... Check, king g5. Maybe bishop f2. Bishop f2, king g5, king takes a4, king h5, king b5, king g4. No, king b3, king g4, king c2, king h3, king d2, king g2, king e1. We're in time, and the a pawn just runs. We have two, king g5, take, take, king b3. But if king gets back to... King gets back to a8, we have to be very careful. So we have to go king b4 there, so we can always cut the king off. And then 
depending which okay, way. Okay, I had goes. several correct answers here. Okay, Bishop F2. Yeah, uh, let's guess. see. Nobody sent me the um, the exclamation mark. Evan sent me exclamation mark. Okay, Evan, uh, you're on. Where should the bishop go? Aha. Uh -huh. Why do you think it's so important to put the bishop there? Uh, so you could stall the black pawns. Um, and, got this uh, one. I right, got two out of three. Two out of three so far. And like block the pawns so they won't like advance. Okay, I will play with black here and you can just play your moves. Uh, king takes a4. Aha. Uh -huh. Or oh, no, 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 no. King no, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Careful. I mean, relax, uh -huh. relax. Everything is fine. I think you could play king e5 here. Aha, uh -huh. just go back with the king. And the... Uh, a4. Yeah, you, you shouldn't play a4. It's better to bring the king first. Yeah, king uh, three. Aha. Uh -huh. Because now you're just in time to, to reach the bishop, right? So here, king f5. Yeah. On the other hand, if I go back with the king, uh -oh. it's easy to win this, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think you could play king e4 here. Exactly. You have to avoid it. Black king must, of course, not reach b7, then it would be a draw. So you should simply oh, but still uh, obstruct my king, right? Okay. So not, not very difficult, right? And yeah, white is winning. Uh, as you can see, the pawn will simply move up to a6 and we will play bishop b6 and black will be in Tsukchuan. Aha. Uh -huh. In the game, however, my opponent uh, made a mistake here. I was very lucky to draw this game because he played bishop c5, which some of you were actually sending me this move. <laughs> I was very lucky here because after king g5, he forgot about one little detail. You will see what happens here. Uh, if you remember that study of uh, Reti with the king, uh, you can use the king in a very clever way here. Uh, what do you think black would play here, anyone? F1, king f it's not very difficult. Anyone, you can just... Uh... Okay, Evan, you found it? Okay, quickly, Evan. Oh, no. Okay, uh, Avan Chamadia, you're on. How to draw here with black? Uh, I think he, uh, just F3 check and... Uh -huh. And yeah, yeah. Bring the king back. And you just go back with the king, right? Yeah, you just go back with the king. And, exactly. Yeah. And this is uh, how the game. This is how the game went. I was extremely lucky to to get here. Yeah. What would you play here, Evan? What is the right move here for Black? Uh. Uh. Aha! You just go back with the king, right? So you're threatening to play king b5, and for this reason, the bishop has to move, and then you can just go back again to, to c7, and it's a draw. So this is how the game went. I was very lucky to save this one. As you can see, the end game was not easy at all, uh, but still, I learned something here. You have to be careful. You have to be careful with these pawn, pawn breaks. Uh, in this case, just like uh, Ryo uh, showed us, no? bishop c6 was a bad idea because white had this very nice breakthrough idea. So in a way, you can say that uh, I failed in a similar way because also in this game, I forgot about the breakthrough idea. Okay, let's move on. Let's see something a little simpler. Uh, now we're in 1994, strong Russian uh, grandmaster. Now he's playing for Poland, Krasenkov, very strong player. But he had a very bad tournament. And uh, yeah, what can I tell you? This game brings me back, uh, it brings me bad memories. <laughs> It, this was really traumatic, but I learned a lot from this uh, loss. So I will give you, let's say, two minutes, and you should just send me Black's best move and the general idea. It's very important that you send me Black's best idea here. For Black to play, send me Black's best move and an associated idea. Yeah, this is a great lecture. These positions are so easy to mess up. And I mean, so many players do. So I, I'm loving this. Okay, so. First thing is that c6 pawn is hanging. So I guess my first instinct is rook e4 check, rook e6. But that's really passive. It's hard to imagine that that's just going to be okay for us. But 
On the other hand, how... It's hard for white to really get in. Because, you know, at one point we're going to be pushing the A-pawn. Oh, yeah, I mean, I mentioned, yeah, at the top of the show, um, Grandmaster Helstein's books are just fantastic. I think really, really excellent books. Like, one on middle game strategy, end game strategy, and there's one on opening strategy uh, as well. I recommend people buy all of them. And coaches, too. They're great for, for teaching. It's just filled with, like, these, like, little small, like, practical examples that are super useful. Rook c4, of course, the problem is rook takes uh, c6. Um, but we could try something like rook c4, rook takes c6, and then a5. And our idea is that we're just trying to get some counterplay uh, with the a-pawn. Are his books suitable for 1400? I think they would be, actually. Yeah, they're, they're based on just teaching kind of uh, basic strategies. So, like, things like improving your pieces pawn play, creating weaknesses, attacking weaknesses. Um, yeah, I think the examples are very instructive and there's a bunch of exercises in, in his books as well. So I think I think 1400 with a board could, could definitely go through it. So yeah, I'm kind of interested in this rook c4 idea because black take white takes on c6, we push a5 and if white ever wants to get his rook around to the a file, then the c pawn drops and the king is also kind of cut off. So maybe this is kind of like a nice active uh counterplay okay time's up i have several correct answers here uh arian you're on share with us how to defend this end game with the black pieces so we start with rook c4 uh-huh and oh okay you give away the pawn it doesn't matter no it doesn't matter got it okay <laughs> got it then, three out of four and then let's uh, go eight, 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 eight. This, uh -huh. is active and that, this is active defense. Yeah. So I get activity and your, your rook has to defend the C5 pawn for any king to win, which it can't. Uh -huh. It also has to stop the A pawn to not lose. You're right. So if rook C7, for example. Then you stay four. Uh huh. A3. Okay. And if I give check. Yeah, very simple. No, no way to go wrong here. King C8. Exactly. We just uh, avoid this little pitfall here, rook A7, and white would actually win. Aha, uh -huh, we just go to C8, and the white will have to give check again, no? And it will be a draw. Yeah, nice, nice work. Excellent. You didn't even think about protecting the pawn, did you? I thought about it. You didn't, uh, it didn't cross your mind to protect the pawn? No, not really. Okay. Thanks, Ariel. Well, it did cross my mind because that's what I played in the game. <laughs> Horrible mistake. I hope you guys won't do this in your own games. Horrible. Absolutely anti-endgames anti uh, move, rook e4, check. The oh, funny no. thing is that it's still a draw, of course. I would just go back with the rook to c4, acknowledge my mistake, and we would be back in the same uh, variation, like uh, Ariel was explaining. So the interesting thing about this endgame is that when you hang on to the material, you actually lose it. You should have placed the rook actively on c4. And in this way, it would have been a draw. So uh, let's see what happened in the game. Still, as you can see, I, I have the time to play rook e4. I could still do it. Well, I could still do it. But uh, I think in that game, it didn't cross my mind. White wouldn't be able to win this end game. The problem for white is simply that the king won't be able to help the rook in protecting the pawn. The rook would love to move away from the c file, you know, to play c6, but for that to happen, the king must be closer to the c pawn, and it's not possible, thanks to the well-placed black rook. So this was a way to, to save the game. Rook h6, and yeah, king b4. What white is going to do here is going to pick up the pawn. Still, I could draw, of course. This is a really sad story. Still, still I could draw. Um, the easiest way to, to draw this endgame would be just to play uh, rook h1. And after rook takes c6, anyone would like to suggest a move for black? You can just write it to the... Aradia says rook b1. I'm not convinced about rook b1. 
I think if you play rook b1, ah, you mean rook b1, but then I would think I will play king c3. Are you sure about this? Because careful, my king could actually uh, get closer in this way. Yeah, Ariane noticed here, and Derin also noticed. The right move is rook c1. Very nice move. As you can see, black is ready to go rook c4 whenever the white rook moves away from the c-file. And in this way, we would make a draw. Please notice that uh, thanks to the b-pawn being, uh, uh, how do you say, knight-pawn, this is a draw, no? You can play with passive defense here. It doesn't matter. Thanks Easy to this draw. being a b-pawn. Had it been a c-pawn, yeah, white would win by bringing uh, the rook to, yeah, what should I say, far away. Aha, uh -huh. so rook c1 is the key move here. If white plays king a5, we would just give check, of course, and we will go back. So white wouldn't be able to win here either. Aha, uh -huh. all about cutting off king, exactly, Arnav, that's the right idea here. Cutting off the king so that it cannot help the rook in protecting the pawns. Well, back to back to the game. King b4, rook h4, terrible mistake. Rook a5, king a5. And here, uh, actually, I thought uh, I thought that after the game, I thought that it was already over. But in fact, black could still save this end game. But now we have to be really precise. We have to play rook h1, and after rook takes c6, yeah, he cannot take because of mate, right? Don't forget that uh, there are mates in in these end games. So rook takes e6, and now you already guess, you can guess what we should do here, right? Yeah, we should first check and give the one. check. If we don't give the check, I think there is some difference. If we play here rook c1, there is a difference. Uh, what is the difference? Let me think. Take yeah, we pawn. just take the pawn, of course, because now I can go to b5. So first we have to give check, and then, exactly, uh, yeah. Uh, Evan already noticed, yeah, rook c1. And again, it's a draw. Fascinating, right? Fascinating. Black could still make a draw here. He should just bring his rook to c4. In the game, I brought the rook to c4, but exactly at the wrong moment. Here. Terrible. Now, rook takes c6, and it's over, because he will take the pawn next move. Yeah, this is how the game went, and white soon won the game. Please notice that after rook takes c5, what was the point of rook c4? Well, to take the pawn, I guess. Notice that after rook takes e5, of course, white will not give check here because then I would actually save myself because I have my own passed pawn, right? In the game, he simply played b5, b, sorry, b7. Yeah, and white won the game. Uh huh. Very sad that my rook is, I think, wow. almost any other place on the board would be good for the rook. You just go back except to the back for, rank. Uh, c5, very bad place, place at this moment. So, what we can learn from this endgame is that we have to play actively. In, in the end game. Almost always the active defense is preferable to the passive defense. Please don't play like I did here in this game. Please don't do this. Even if it's a still a draw, it's, uh, you're walking in the wrong direction here. You're, you're de definitely not uh, doing, you're not playing the end games as you should play them. So the right way here, of course, rook c4, and after rook takes c6, a5, black can never lose this end game. Okay, one last uh, sad end game. Very quickly, uh, I will give you just one minute. You're playing white here, World Championship under 20, many years ago. Uh, please try to establish white's best plan here. One minute. Okay, guys, we're down a pawn. First instinct is like King G2. Just to get the king in, but king g2, we have to deal with like rook d3, for example, and we're losing the, the d pawn. Hmm. Another idea is to go cd, cd, rook a1, going after the a pawn. Because I think what we want to do as white is trade off all the pawns on the queen side. If we can trade everything on the queen side, then the two versus one on the king side is an easy draw. But that might be easier said than done. Let's see, take, take, rook a1, rook d3, rook takes a6, rook takes d5, rook b6. Why not rook a1 first? Well, I'm time's sure. up. I have only one answer, which is uh, completely correct. And it's uh, Evan again. So Evan, share with us. 
What do you think about White's strategy here? Uh, I think you should trade all the pawns on the, like the king side or queen side to like uh -huh. amplify all of them. Exactly. And then just draw on the king side because a two on one is a pretty easy draw. You're completely right. Uh -huh. Any possible way of achieving that? Which comes uh, to your mind? Maybe C takes D6. Uh huh. C takes D6. Excellent. C takes D6. And then rook A1. Uh huh. Of course. Yeah. What would black play here? Let's say I'm rook so D3, proud. right? <laughs> um, you could just take that pawn. Uh huh. And then time and to then trade, right? B5. Yeah, maybe B5. Uh huh. Yeah, impossible to go wrong here, right? Yeah. Um, B6. Aha, uh -huh, B6. Well, what, what will I play? Rook B5? Um, B7. Aha. Uh -huh. um, and Rook B6. Yeah, that's it. And then we will take on D5 next move, and it will be an elemental draw. This was the way to play here. Okay, uh, we have, yeah, thanks, Evan. We have some other suggestions here. Passive, what if B5 in the first place? Yes, I think it also works, but still, I would take now, you will take on B5, and I will put my rook, I guess, on D3 or C3? D3, maybe. Let me think here. What if I put my rook here? Mm, rook B7. Yeah, this, this also works. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, this is another good way to play. I think there are many ways to, to save this one. Uh, rook uh, A1 is also a good idea. The same idea of just swapping the pawns. It doesn't matter that black ends up with an extra pawn. We should just make sure that the pawns disappear. Yeah, uh, a move which uh, perhaps isn't that good. Some people were saying rook E1. I understand the idea not to play actively with the rook. However, I would just play king G7. Uh, so I would be ready to play rook F7 if, if you give me check. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what happened in the game. Yeah, this is terrible what happened in the game. But like uh, this is the theme of this subject of this class, right? Learn from your losses. C6, horrible move. I was dreaming about some, yeah, some kind of tactics here with B5, B6, and I will win the game. Uh -huh. Look what my opponent played. Yeah, it's, it's a very bad move, C6. But uh, anyway, why? Because I, I knew some, I saw some variations where I would win. That's the answer. Anyone can imagine what Black played here. You can just write uh, the, the move. What would black play? Okay, uh, some people were saying rook d3. Okay, in that case, I guess I would play rook uh, a1 or rook e1, which is the fastest one. Rook e1, I would play here. So, something like this. No longer that clear, is it? Now my rook is particularly, is, is rather it active. Okay. I'm threatening to play rook d7 and c7. So you have to give check and put your rook behind, but I will bring my king. I'm not convinced at all that this is the right way to go. Now white is really active. His king will move forward and, yeah, like the previous game, right? Then he will try to uh, move away the rook. So this is a very bad way to go. Okay, let's see then. Uh, what should c6, bad move. What should black play then? I'm still waiting for the right move. Still waiting for the right move. What did Grandmaster Vescovi play here with the black pieces? Evan says root three, but we just talked about this, didn't we? Uh huh. Yeah, Evan Chamadia found it. Okay, Evan, you're on. Share with everybody what you have found here. What will happen? Well, I would play King G seven because, like. First of all, like rook D, he has like rook D, rook E one ideas, and like mm -hmm. so I, I just want to like move my king guard e, like the E file, and then like it like it can like um, defend the, and then we can just like try to attack D three. Okay, simple. Please uh, play on here, Evan. You play with the black pieces. Okay, yeah. Uh. Probably. Please, uh, yeah, please. Uh, oh, yeah, oh, okay. Uh, 
Just use your king, right? Just uh, use your king. Pawn is king of six. Of course, of course. We can give up that pawn in order to bring our king closer. So I took on a6. Oh, that's really nice. Rook a7, rook f7. And uh, what would you play next? Uh. Okay, some uh, other students already found this. Arian and Daniel Lazaria. Let's bring the king. Next. Asis Panda. You all found, and Evan also, king a5. Excellent. This is how the game went. So now his king is in action. He's ready to take this pawn, and he's also uh, protecting that pawn, which is which is important, because he will need one uh, queenside pawn in order to win this game. I played rook a7, and, of course, rook f7. And what was my problem here? Well, I think that in time travel, I saw some idea with, with b6. This was my, my plan. So that king after takes. king takes e six, I would go b seven. Unfortunately, Check uh, he has this nice resources: rook f one and rook b one. And in this way, black wins the game. Actually, he can also win by playing uh, rook uh, f eight. It's a funny way to to win also. So that if rook a eight, he can give check, and then <laughs> he can take on b seven. It's That's another good. way to play. That's cute. Aha. Uh -huh. So in the game, I had to play this terrible move, rook a5. This is, again, how you should not play endgames, right? Don't play passively. This is not a healthy place for a rook. So he just continued with his active king. Very nice uh, game. Notice that he doesn't use the rook. He doesn't play, for example, rook a4. Uh, the rook is, is okay on f7 because the king can do much more danger here. King d4 and king c4. He just took my pawns here. Um, the rest of the game is not very interesting. I simply, I'm sim simply lost here because um, my king is cut off, so I, I cannot uh, fight with the king against the deep pawn. And he just won by advancing his pieces forward. Oh. So very uh, painful loss here. Very painful loss. I knew that I had uh, really screwed this one up, and uh, I promised myself to never do it again. Anyway, when looking at this endgame again. I thought that I was lost here, but actually, it seems that I could have drawn here uh, the game. Yeah, Vescovi is from Brazil, but it's, yeah, it's Italian uh, last name. Yes, uh, that's true. So, I think I could have made a draw here with King G2. This was the right way to play, activate my king. So that after Rook B3, I could now take, and there is a difference here. Now, I am ready to go to attack the pawns, and unlike the game, his rook is not in a good defensive position. So, in this way, I would actually make a draw here. I would take, and uh, he would not be able to, to win this one, because in the first place, I can harass his, his rook, right? So, he will never win this. He will never win this game. Um, something like this. It will be a draw. So, actually, I could have drawn even after my terrible move, c6. Uh -huh. If I had used my king, uh, how about rook h5? At what moment, Evan, are you... Oh, rook h5 here. Well, I would just take the pawn and uh, I will defend right. myself in, in Philidor style, right? That's not too difficult. Aha. Uh -huh. So, uh, bottom line here, uh, don't uh, be too clever in the endgame. Uh, c6 was not the right way to go here. I should have uh, eliminated the queenside pawns and then uh, try to... Yes, just save myself there in in the in the end game on the how do you say on the king side? Yeah, with two against one, it would be an, an easy draw here. So rook a one was a good option, and also perhaps the simplest one just to take and just like we saw here, just swap all the pawns. Uh huh. So so far uh, my losses. No, now we we have we have ten minutes left. Let's see very quickly uh, what I learned from this. I started to study end game books. Uh, there is a very good book by, maybe you know about this book, Theory and Practice of Chess Endings by Alexander Panchenko, which was published uh, around the 90s, I think. No, I very good so. endgame book. There are other excellent books, of course. Uh, Dvoretsky's Endgame Manual, the endgame books by Mueller is, is excellent as well, and other, many other endgame books. However, I like that book, uh, the Russian book. Uh, it helped me a lot. So here we have a first example. Uh, I'm playing some open tournament many years later, 2003. White is in danger here 
because uh, the, black, the black king is going to take this pawn, right? So first I played here bishop f3 in order to reach a rook game because I knew that in the rook game there would be more chances for a draw. Yeah, he took on h4 and I had to took on, take on d5 to put the king. Yeah, now it's your move. One minute. What to play with white here? White's best move? Oh man, I have an idea. If we go rook f7, then rook takes b4, right? It's a big problem. So maybe we can go b5 and try to uh, trade off one of our pawns. Because if we just can leave black with one pawn on the queen side, then uh, our king can hopefully get close enough to, to hold it. So b5, I'm a little bit worried about rook e4. But then maybe we can go rook f7. And, uh, and go after the b pawn. b5 f c b, then we can go rook b6 and win back one of the pawns. And if b5 uh, king takes c5, then we go b c6 b c6, king e2, and our king should be close enough to 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 defend against the c pawn. That's my guess. b5. Okay, time's up. Uh, we had several correct answers. Uh, Aradia Panda is one of them. Please share with us, Aradia, how to continue with white here. Yeah, so as like rook f7 doesn't work because of rook take b4. So I think we should go rook d6. Uh -huh. um, oh. And after he goes like king c4, we have like rook d7. Exactly. Oh, that's good. Wow, I didn't see that. Yeah, and just rook take <laughs> b7. King e2. Get of course. And if uh, rook d4, cutting the king off? Yeah, I think probably just like rook b1 works. Exactly. The frontal attack. Uh huh. Very nice. This In this way, we will make a draw, right? Let's say he plays something like uh, c5 here. What would you play with white? Rook d1. Let's go. Easy. Easy. Rook d1. Aha, you could just swap rooks, right? Make rook one is it's a good option here because uh, it will be a draw if whatever black uh, plays here. Uh, yeah, starting with rook takes, king takes a position. So, yeah, kind of building a bridge. This is how the game went. King e2 was played in the game, uh, bringing the king closer. And after king c4, I simply brought my king to the right side of the pawn. Yeah, you know about this technique as well. The king should be placed on the short side and the rook should be on the long side. This is elementary. And the game was later a draw. So this was the first, first example. I was very happy to draw this game. Uh, I was able to win this tournament thanks to this uh, draw. So it's, it was a good uh, moment for me. Bishop f3, swap uh, bishops, go to the rook end game, where it's Hard often to easier positions. to make a draw. Uh -huh. And then, just like Radia explained to us, it's very important to play this move, rook d6. Uh, we cannot play here b5. Some people were saying b5, but it's not working. Please notice that uh, two pawns is too much. Uh, here, black will win if he plays rook c4. This is the key move here. If he doesn't play rook c4, white would actually draw. I once drew this end endgame as well. I once drew it uh, like this with, against two double pawns. It's a draw. It's possible to draw this, but not if the king is cut off. Okay. Excellent. Let's continue. Next end game. All right, let's do it. Oh boy. Yeah, this was a very complex end game. Please notice that we're playing with the black pieces. Our pawns move forwards. Yeah, and this pawn moves that way. Uh, we're short of time, so just one minute. Please send me Black's best uh, move here. Uh, Black's first move and the idea behind your move. Oh boy, tough one. First instinct is that rook c6 is going to be too passive. So my guess is rook e3 check, forcing the king to the d file. Like maybe rook e3 check, I don't know, king d4. Then we go rook e2. Actually, king d4, maybe we go rook e6 there. I think rook e3 check, why goes king d5? Then we go rook e2. And if rook takes 
Actually, no, rook e3 check, king d5, we go king f5 first. Then rook takes b6, we'll go rook e2. The point is our king is active, so maybe we can win this one. So rook e3 check, king d5, king f5. If check king d4, then maybe rook e6. Okay, very little time, one minute, right? Uh, not so much time to think, but uh, I got a few good correct answers here. Uh, Timothy got it right, and uh, so did Evan. Aha, uh -huh. and Daniel also. Well, Evan, I'm sure that you want to talk again. So uh, please uh, share with us what is your plan here for Black? I thought you could play King H5. Aha, uh -huh, giving up the pawn. Yeah. And then King G4. Correct. Wow. And yeah, that, that's basically it. That's how mm -hmm. the game went. Oh and you God. simply try to, to pick up the pawn. Right. You don't know if, if you will succeed wow. or not, of course. But this is the right way to go. Because if we go back, uh, you didn't think a lot about rook c6, did you? The passive move. Um, yeah, not that much. Not that much. Uh -huh. what, what do you think white would play? G4. Um, In order to restrict black. Um, maybe king d5? Yeah, he could play king d5, although I think the king should rather oh, stay sorry. closer to the pawn. Um, yeah, there's a very simple move here. Rook b5? Rook b5, Check. maybe <laughs> careful with rook c5. I don't know if, if it works, but... Um, well, I yeah. think it still might be a draw. Nope. That might still be a draw, yeah. But there is a much uh, safer move here for white. Yeah, like uh, oh, Darian, Daniel, Timothy... Uh, uh, are saying here g4 would fix a draw basically on the spot because black would not be able to progress here i mean no matter what he plays here he will have uh, some difficulties rook c5 king d6 or perhaps rook f6 black probably would just wait so uh, you're completely right we have to play actively here okay thanks uh, evan we have to play actively no matter if we win or, or draw but we should at least try it right there are many drawn end games which uh, are actually won in the end it's not that they are winning from the very beginning. You have to rely on some mistake for your opponent. And that is actually how the game went. So king g4, and he played here king f6. This is the right way to go, of course. His king is in a very bad place, as you can see. Normally, we would never win uh, rook and pawn against rook and pawn. But actually, in that endgame book that I was uh, referring to by Panchenko, there were some cases of this where rook and pawn would win against rook and pawn. So I knew about this stuff. I knew more or less. Uh, how to proceed here, how to try. So he played king f6, is the right way to go. I protect the pawn so that I'm able to uh, push the king forward or perhaps like this, depending on where he put, puts his rook. He places, he puts uh, rook on e6. Uh, let's see what happened after that. King h4, I could have played king f4 as well. Anyway, it basically leads to the same thing. I put my king on h4 and here he tried to swap rooks. Of course, I'm not interested in that. And at this point, he makes the final mistake. At this point. It was still possible to draw here. He must play rook e2. This is a passive move, but it works. Because black will actually win this pawn in the end. The pawn will fall. But there will appear a drawn endgame, which I had also studied. You will see it here. Let's see here. I will make a few moves. Black must move away the white king in order to progress. Now, as you can see, we have a clear plan of playing something like like this, right? This is our plan here. We will win the pawn. Unfortunately, we will not win the game because he will just wait for us. And as soon as the black rook moves away, well, this is a key moment. He must uh, wait for, for the king to, to rook to move away. Something like uh, king f6 so that black cannot go rook e2. This will be a draw. Let's say king g1. We will wait. And after the rook goes here, we have something like this. Let's see if I can get this right. Uh, yeah, something like this. And we will just put our king on, on h4 and we can just wait here. <laughs> Black would have to advance, but it's not a good idea to play g2 here, right? Aha. Uh -huh. I, missed, I missed the win for white. Sorry, did I miss something? Yeah, thanks. Uh, the pawn, oh, the pawn was hanging. Oh, I'm, I'm very sorry. I didn't notice. Uh, yeah. 
So I think I messed it up somehow. <laughs> How was the variation? Maybe with the king on h2 then. Yeah, I think that this is the moment. Yeah, I could play like this, right? I could take it. Like, yeah, this is the right way. Sorry, ah, sorry, guys. I messed it up here. Anyway, now we have the right position. So uh, this is the way how the game will be a draw. I sometimes I once had a game like this also uh, in 1991 in the European Under 15 uh, Championship in Romania. I know, yeah, this is and a draw. unfortunately, I had to give a draw here because I, it's not possible to win. So this is the right uh, way to go. Oh, what is the name of the endgame book? Well, there are many good endgame books. Uh, I can just tell from my personal experience that this book, Theory and Practice of Chess Endings, by the late uh, Alexander Panchenko, who was the head coach of endgame training in the ex-Soviet Union, if I'm not mistaken. This is a really good endgame book, but there are many other good endgame books. It's not the only one, but it helped me a lot because there are a lot of exercises. So back to the game. This is the position. I knew a little about this stuff and I was uh, lucky here because uh, Jobava played King F4. And here, finally, uh, I'm able to prevent the plan that we saw. But this intermediate check, I left his rook in a bad place. And now he can no longer go back to e2. And now it's it's lost. It's lost because he's finally forced to play g3 and then it's not the same thing. You will see the difference here. You will see the difference. If we compare this to the other position, if we compare this to the position uh, here, as you can see, uh, after rook g1, rook b3, it's like uh, black is, uh, black would like to play here rook g0. He would like to have one more file for his rook. Uh, in that way, he would be able to, to win. But uh, it's not possible. Here, how, however, because the pawn is already on the third rank, I have more space for my, uh, for my rook. And oh, this means that better uh, to take on it G3. will be, uh, I will win this game. Because if you look carefully here, um, if he puts his rook, yeah, I, I think you understand what I'm saying, right? I would just take like this, and here I would be ready to play rook g1, and I will not be mated. There's so this is the big difference, sure. right? In the game, he played rook e1 here. And I will ask you for a last uh, move. Uh, we're already uh, out of uh, time. Uh, Black's best move here, please. One minute. Well, if king takes g3, we have to deal with rook g1 check, right? And that looks like we're losing the pawn. So I I guess we got to go rook takes g3. If king g2, we lose the pawn on g4. So we got to be careful. Yeah, I think rook takes g3 is simple, but only move. Also try rook f2. Rook f2, rook e4. Okay, time's up. We have an outstanding student here. Arian Gutla found the right move. He is the only one. So please, Arian, share wow. with us what to play here. Rook a3. And what's the point of rook a3? Oh, rook a3. To give a check from the side. Uh-huh. Yeah, Thanks. place your king. Exactly. We can use this check here at some moment on a5 or a4, perhaps. Did you check the other options here? Did you check uh, the captures, for example, on g3? Yeah. But yeah. they're bad, right? Yeah. What about uh, what about rook takes g3? Why is then, it bad? Then I think there's like just rook e2, for example, one of the moves. Rook e2? I don't think it's possible. Or, or am, am I... Even you cannot, yeah, this I think we already looked at. It won't uh, work for white, but rook h1 will definitely work. Aha, uh -huh. after king g2, what would you play? Uh, rook h4 or rook a1? Rook h4 is a bad move, uh, Ariane. Don't no, put your king bad. there, please. Don't put your rook there, please. It's a bad place for him. Uh, but there is a better place for the rook. Okay. Greg Shahid uh, knows uh, what to play here. Greg, please share with us. What would you play here? You gonna unmute me? Exciting. Uh, rook a1. <laughs> exactly, rook a1. So actually, white is using the same concept, no? He's uh, enabling checks, uh, side checks with the rook. 
Excellent, uh, Greg. That's oh, a very you. good move. <laughs> you could actually also play, I think, uh, the move King F4, could you? Yeah, it's risky, it's, though. It's we risky, though. Three, yeah, why, why make one, things uh, more, more complex? But still, it seems to, to work out rather well. I prefer yeah. Greg's move, uh, Rook A1. Looks much nicer. Please notice the bad place, uh, placement of the black. Can I, rook at can I ask if, if, if King F4, can we go Rook B3? King F4? Rook Sorry? B3, like Rook B3. Rook B3, rook yeah, B3. maybe. Huh? Seems maybe, very maybe. risky. Yeah. Maybe actually Black would win here. And just for the record, uh, Greg, Rook A3 is also... Oh, sorry. I don't know why I said B3. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, that would win, actually. Yeah, you're right, uh, Greg. This looks winning for, for Black. So it's a bad place for the Rook. I think we should really rely here on, on Greg's original idea. Simply Rook A1. Take the moment when the Black Rook is badly placed right. to give this annoying it. side check. And it would be a draw. So... Well, back to Arian. Arian said here that we should play rook a3. And you're completely right. We would like to take the pawn, but later, later. First, we put a rook in a good place. And here... You're not in a uh, rush. Yeah, you're not in a rush, exactly. Uh, he played here king f4. You can guess uh, black's next move. Give a check. Of course. We, we now give the check and we're ready to pick up the pawn, right? Now I can take yeah. Yeah, now we can take, and uh, here he tried in the game, uh, rook uh, e3 check, but it's it's already impossible, no king f2, and yeah, uh, black won the White game. King is cut off. So. Uh, no other options here. Rook g1 was the last chance to confuse black. Uh, what would you play now, Aryan? Uh, where to put the king? F3, you're sure? King h4. I think here I would make a draw. No, h3. Um, h3. Exactly, h3. you would go to h3 instead. And so I cannot, now it's not possible to, to use the same idea. So, yeah, white would just be lost here, no? As you can see. King f3 and, yeah, we're ready to give check again with the rook and then we will push the pawn. So, summing up what we saw here, yeah, thanks, uh, Arian, excellent work. What we saw here was that black... Uh, Probably he, he won't win this game, but he can at least try it. And the best way to go here is to abandon the pawn on b6. We don't need it anymore. I had learned my lesson. I don't play passive moves, moves like rook c6 that often anymore. Aha. Uh -huh. King h5 and after rook takes b6, king g4. We would have practical chances to win this game. White, in order to draw, should put his rook on b2 and keep the king close to the pawn. Well, uh, in the game he did the right thing for a while, but uh, in the crucial moment, like we saw here, um, the crucial moment is here. He must play here, rook e2, but it's not so easy to see all this also when you're down on the clock and uh, yeah, other aspects. So uh, it's important, in summing up, important to study endgames and uh, it's definitely a part of chess where you can improve quickly. I improved my results a lot after uh, reading the, this endgame book that I was uh, talking about. I think perhaps I should stop here. I have two more examples, but uh, time is already, uh, it's already a bit late. So uh, thanks a lot. And uh, I give the word to Kostya, right? Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Johan. That was awesome. We, we really enjoyed it over here on Twitch. Uh, that was a lot of fun. We got, we got most of them. We got most of them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if there are any uh, questions from the students, any quick questions for, for Johan, be, please feel free to... Um, to send them in the chat and Johan, you can you can choose your your favorites. Okay. I have a, a quick question for you just to kick things off. What what are you working on nowadays? Are are you mostly coaching, writing more books, or what are you up to? Well, I'm working uh, at the Sports Federation in uh, in the uh, province of Chimborazo in in the country of Ecuador. Uh, they have a chess uh, section, so I'm doing the chess coaching there. Oh, uh, very cool. Are you living in Ecuador? Yes, I, I, I'm living in, in Ecuador. Oh, uh -huh. interesting. I didn't know that. Okay. And uh, no, I don't. Uh, I'm not into books anymore. Uh, I'm happy with the books that I've written, but uh, it's extremely time consuming. And uh, yeah, who knows? Maybe in the future, but uh, uh, no, no more book project for the moment. Uh, sorry, Evan, should I unmute you? Okay. Uh, I will unmute uh, Evan. Okay, you're on, Evan. 
Can you oh, please yeah. open up the chat? Should I open up the chat? Well, that's Greg's uh, uh, responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not into that. Okay, Evan, would you like to say something? Uh, or you just uh, uh, wanted to uh, unmute, uh, to uh, unlock the chat? I just wanted to. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I unlocked the chat for them. Okay, Daniel asks uh, how to beat D4. Well, that's a difficult question. I think uh, I'm not the right person to to reply. Well, I, I guess you should just look for an opening that uh, that you like. Uh, you feel well in, in the positions that you get, and uh, and yeah, study. Well, what what else is there to do? Uh, you have what to study we, hard. What did you used to play against D4? I mean, I used to play all my life the Nimso Indian and Queens Indian, but after I saw some games by Greg Shahid, I'm now leaning towards the Grunfeld. I think <laughs> maybe that's that's the best shot for Black. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting opening. Yeah. I mean, so seriously, you have to look for an opening which uh, suits your style. And uh, there are so many openings to choose from, and there is no exact answer. Yeah, there's like ten good openings, right, against D4. Yeah, minimum ten. Ten good openings. I'm uh -huh. going to the end. Queen's Gambit decline, the Ragos and stuff. Exactly. Slides, so, so many ways to, to play. Uh, Kostya likes the King's Indian. And that's, mm -hmm. I think, uh, people who play the King's Indian, many of them played it all their lives. And I can understand it. It's a fantastic, fascinating opening. You don't exchange a single piece in the King's Indian. I think that's a big difference. In the, in the Grunfeld, sometimes, Greg, you end up in endgames. No, you can't avoid it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, if white wants to draw, there's some lines that they can try to do it, but exactly. Usually, but in the in the King's Indian, he can't draw, do that. Okay. Hmm? In the King's Indian, I mean, he cannot do that. Uh, he cannot do that so easily. Uh, yeah, it's not as easy. But, you know, there's always a way. They can trade queens and move six or something. Oh yeah, maybe. But yeah, I, I get your point. But still, I think some openings uh, they keep more room for playing for a win at any moment, and uh, yeah, the King King's Indian must be one of them. But uh, still, if you want to practice uh, endgames, I think uh, you should definitely look into the Grunfeld because you get a lot of endgames there, for oh, example, with the, with the queenside pawn majority with black. And sure. th this, this is really uh, interesting. So, yeah, there are many good openings. Kostya says that with knight a6, uh, he can actually avoid uh, Greg's uh, sure. very, uh, exchange of queens. Yeah, good point, uh, Kostya. I like that knight a6, uh, how do you say, the Gleck, uh, King's Indian. I, I like it. It's it's really dynamic and uh, there are chances for a win almost always. No? Well, I cannot see any more questions, so I guess it's a good moment to say goodbye. Yeah, we can we can let them leave. Yeah, awesome. or I think they want to to chat, perhaps. Uh, spam. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's fine. They don't need spam. No spamming, no spamming. Um, thanks so much for the class. It was super awesome. Okay, thanks everyone. Uh, was a very nice class and good luck with uh, with your end game. So, thanks, uh, Greg. Thanks, Kostya, for this opportunity, and uh, see you soon. Absolutely. Thanks so much. I'll be closing out the class now. See you guys all later. See you later. Okay.